जो शूटिंग किया है इसलिए किया है ताकि ये आगे इस्तेमाल हो सकता है समझो इसमें से दो लोगों ने कल डिसीजन लिया कि मैं कंपनी छोड़ के जाने वाला वेदर ही कैन एबल टू ड्रॉन आउट वॉट एवर यू लर्न टूडे वो टेक्नोलॉजी अभी तक नहीं आई है नहीं आएगी कि आपके दिमाग में जो आपने आज सीखा है कि क्या नहीं एबल टू जा रहा है ना उसका वो जो सीखा है कल का वो निकाल के लेकर टेक्नोलॉजी आज ना तो कभी भी ये बहुत सोचो मैं इनके लिए सीख रहा हूँ कभी भी बहुत सोचो मैं कंपनी के लिए सीख रहा हूँ हमेशा ये सोचो कि मैं अपने लिए सीख रहा हूँ मेरे खुद के ग्रोथ के लिए सीख रहा हूँ मेरे खुद के इम्प्रूवमेंट के लिए सीख रहा हूँ जो मुझसे कोई कभी भी लेके नहीं जाएगा इट विल भी ऑलवेज विथ मे और जितना मैं सीखूंगा उतना मुझे आगे जाने के चांसेस हैं जितना मैं नहीं सीखूंगा तो मैं वही रहूंगा कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है ना कंपनी को पड़ेगा ना मालिक को पड़ेगा फर्क आपको खुद को पड़ेगा बिकॉज यू विल स्टे इन द सेम प्लेस फॉर एवर आपको ग्रोथ चाहिए तो यू हैव टू लर्न और उसके लिए आपको जो भी पेपर्स चाहिए किसी से पूछो लॉट ऑफ इंटरनेट पर जाओगे तो बहुत सी चीज़ें अवेलेबल हैं जैसे हमारा डायनामिक फॉर्मिक ग्रुप है उसका वीडियो यूट्यूब चैनल है इसके सिवा बहुत सारे वीडियोस और बहुत सारे अलग अलग डॉक्यूमेंट्स आपको लेफ्ट के ऑर्डर मिलेंगे और कंजप्शन अगर आप छाप दोगे तो जिस दस बीस ऐसे ही डॉक्यूमेंट आपको मिलेंगे ट्राई टू लर्न फ्रॉम वॉट एवर वेर एवर यूर गेटिंग नॉलेज सीखो उन्नति करो करेक्ट दूसरी चीज मैं और एक बात एक कहानी के साथ बात को खत्म करूंगा सेशन को खत्म करूंगा आप सोचेंगे कि इस तरह के सेशन हम करते हैं बराबर वाई दिस सेशन सा रिक्वायर जो मैंने बताया उसमें से 90 परसेंट चीजें आपको पता थी हाय ना 90 परसेंट थिंग्स आर नोट टू यू कुछ 10 परसेंट अलग कुछ आपने सुना होगा यहाँ का आपको पता चला होगा 90 परसेंट थिंग्स यू आर नोइंग ऑलरेडी जस्ट आई हैव रिपीटेड तो इस तरह के सेशन हम क्यों लेते हैं सो इट इज बेसिकली एक कहानी के माध्यम से मैं बताना चाहूँगा इसको एक मजदूर था जो लकड़ी काटने का काम देर वॉज ऑन वर्कर डूइंग कटिंग ऑफ वुडन वुडन ट्रीज एंड ऑल दिस सो ही गॉट अ जॉब वो बहुत साल से वॉज वर्किंग देयर फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम तो वन डे वॉट हैपन सम न्यू कमर एंड स्केल so he has seen uh, that the wooden cutter was doing good job the owner is very happy with that so he he was young and very uh, hot blooded uh, hot blooded and very smart one so he thought that uh, as i am young and owner should give me more attention because he is a old guy he is though he is working from long time he is a old guy i have more energy so i can cut more wooden than him so daily he was thinking like that but the owner was believing on that board so one day he got angry and he got to want to go to owner and say uh, you are focusing on him and cutting more wood than him why you are not giving more attention to me why you are not recognizing me so that owner say no he is doing better work than you so he got angry and he told that to okay let us have a competition tomorrow, tomorrow morning we will have a competition with me and him let us give a task in the morning until evening who is able to cut the more wood he will be the winner so next day both came the competition started that wood cutter has old wood cutter has started his work done some work up to lunch time he had a nice lunch and after lunch he go to the sleep for half an hour take a rest and then again start and cutting wood The other fellow who is young, he was continuously doing the work. He is even skip his lunch. He decided that I will cut more wood than him yesterday. He continues doing that, and at the end, in the evening, they have measure who has done how many wood has been cut out, and the winner was the old one. He was surprised. He say he has taken half an hour for lunch, then he slept for half an hour. is not so strong then also how we can able to cut more so he go to that old man and uh, with respect he asked him 
sorry, but uh, I want to understand how it has been done by you. I want to learn. When student is ready, teacher will. Then that fellow says, yes, you have whole day you have cut the wood without stopping. I have done nothing. I have been uh, for four, three, four hours I have cut wood. Then I take good lunch. Then I sleep. But after sleeping, before I start my second session, what I did was I have resharpened my page. What I done? Resharpen my page. That is what the trainings are doing. We know everything, but resharpening of that knowledge is very important. Because during our regular activities, regular our uh, work culture, we forget most of the things, we misunderstand some of the things, we ignore some of the things. So, this resharpening of knowledge is very important and that resharpening of knowledge is been done by this kind of trainings and sessions and that visits so that you can revisit your knowledge, you can understand the importance of that and you can implement it in all shops. So that is what I want to say. Thank you very much for your patient hearing and uh, it's already 2 o'clock so let us enjoy your lunch and we'll be back at uh, 3 o'clock. For our third session, that is on benchmarking of SAP. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is the most critical time for the speaker. After the lunch. Because the audience is supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> it's a challenging task. So I normally take whenever I go outside and prefer this is sand additives, retromide and full compound, sand system cycle, sand properties, what happens to metal when metal enters in the mold, practice affecting casting surface finish and guideline on sand control. These are the metrics we are talking today. So initially we start with the silica sand properties. Uh, mainly silica sand properties, properties which, are, which we are looking for. First one is APS number, seal distribution, it should be single peak and clay -tip. Clay should be as low as possible. Why silica sand? We are using silica sand. First question is why silica sand? Why are we using only silica sand and not other any sand? Correct no? <coughs> So the answer, answers, there are many reasons. Number one is availability. Availability of silica sand is plenty. It is available on seashore, there are many mines, so that availability is plenty, so that you can use it in a good body. Secondly, it is thermally stable. It is thermally stable. So heat transfer is not hot, so it is thermally stable. Third is its softening point is 1675 to 1725. The sand softening point was supposed to be in 100. What was that? If we put it in 1500, fusion would be happening. So, as the softening point is 1675, the fusion does not happen and that is why you can able to get through dust. So, softening point is another one. Next one is chemical inactive. We are using many binders and resins. So, it is not affecting sand because it is chemically <coughs> inert, not inert, or rather inert. It is reusable. Another important factor is it can be reused again and again so that the requirement of sand is less so that we can uh, consume natural resources for longer time. Otherwise, what happens? Every time we take a look at the sand, the area is and we will be in a problem. But right now, because of it is reusable, we have sustained. It is cheap. Rather, it is cheap. It is having low cost. 3 rupees or 3 rupees, 50 paisa or 4 rupees. It is not like the pure biscuit. So it is cheap. So commercially it is viable for this. Next one is in non-hazardous and non-toxic. So it is non-toxic and non-toxic. So you can touch it, you can 
use it in our daily routine. Next important factor is moldability because it can be molded, it can be used for moldability. If moldability is not so we cannot use it for making the mold. So moldability is another important factor. And last one is bad tender profit. As it is bad tender profit, that is thermally stable, we can use it for pouring. We can uh, pour the metal and get the better. Benefit in using silica sand. Number one is it can be reused more than 95 percent. So uh, about 90 to 95 percent we are reusing this sand, so it is commercially viable and also requirement is less, so we can uh, able to control the natural resources. Second is good moldability. This is the important, most important factor why we are using silica sand that is good moldability properties. Next one is non-hazardous, non-reactive can be used for bulk production. This is another important factor. It can be used for bulk production. As an egg, we get 30, we can get 100 volts per hour. So that, that kind of productivity can be get through this sand. So it is used for bulk productivity. Cheap and provides collapsibility of it. There is another important function. After pouring, you can able to absorb, you can able to collapse the mold so that can, can, sand can be used again. Some uh, sand cannot be collapsed, for example, CO2 sand, it is not collapsible. You have to use some collapsible agent or breaking breakdown agent to get it collapsible. But normal green sand, it is a collapsible, so you can use it, reuse it again and again, more than 90 or 95 percent. These are the very general things I just want to share with you because you should, somebody will ask you why you are using silica sand. You should able to understand. Next one is uh, AFS. AFS should be, uh, this is very vague statements. In this uh, presentation, there may be some vague statements will be there because sand system will differ from quantity to quantity. AFS number, active play, all, most of the properties will vary from quantity to quantity, so it will be made, the ranges will be wide. So, understand that. Okay. So, again, this is a very vague statement, 50 to 70. Some quantities use 50, some quantities use 70. Because uh, the sand, which is low bake or CO2, they use 40, 45 also. Shell molding use 70, 75 also. So there will be a wide range of uh, AFS number available. So sand distribution. This is very important sieve distribution. Now, I will take some sand here for the wide. What is AFS? What is AFS? American You are given full form. I am not asking full form. What is AFS? It is a number, right? You are rightly saying it is a American finest number. Now, you are maintaining AFS number 16. You are suppose you are maintaining AFS number 16. Now, important thing in your control plan. You have mentioned that we require AFS sand of AFS 60, correct? Sand comes, you check it, you block AFS number 60, and that is why you are expect, uh, accepting that sand <coughs> at interview level, correct? True? Yes. Any doubt on that? The process is correct, but what happens? This 60 can be made with number of parameters. <coughs> it can be made 24, 22 into 3, 15 into 4, 12 into 5, 16 into 1, 1 into 60. All answers are correct or not? All answers are correct. Answer is 60. Ways are? Similar, you got a sand with 60 FS, but the distribution may be different, which is not required for your plant. You have to verify whether the sand which you have received is FS 60 is okay, but whether it meets your requirement or sieve distribution that you have to verify before expecting the sand. This is very important. Most of the countries miss that point. They just check AFS number and accept it, but 
Later on, after few days, few months, few years, their distribution curve of their prepared sand gets deteriorated and they start this species of sand rock, sand fusion, scabbing. That is why this distribution plays an important role. So you have to mention or you have to inform your supplier that I want this, this, this you, this percentage of. That is what is written here. 50, 70, 53 and pack, that is water free, should be less than 10 percent. Bottom three seals should be less than 10 percent. Bottom three means it is a fine. Fine should be less than 10 percent. The first top three seals, that is the coarser sand, the rough sand, that should be less than 5 percent max. Balance 85 percent includes these three seals, this 212, 150, and 106 are important for getting the better surface finish. That should be around 60 percent, 60 60. This requirement has to be passed on to your supplier, and it should be noted in your incoming inspection plan, so that whenever you are accepting the sand, you are not only looking at the AFS number, but also distribution of that sand. Clear? Any doubt? This figure can change based on your product. What is the type of casting you are making? What is the virtual? What is the line? What is the line? Many things. What is the centimeter ratio? But it can vary from point to point. There is no general standard. Though there are slides, I will show you my standard. But it may vary a little bit in your point. Also, you have to make your own by your experience. Your experience will have to be made. By and large, it will be almost 5% here and there, it will, it will be almost the same. So, APS, uh, already we are talking, APS prepared sand is depending on, this is another important factor, is your core sand and your press sand. Your core sand and your press sand. Because you are using prepared sand, that is uh, reused sand around 90%. Whatever loss is there, that loss we are filling up by using new sand and core in what is core is going inside. So if that sand also is not as per your requirement, what will happen? Slowly your <coughs> sand distribution also get. So core sand and press sand also need to be now proper analysis. Mainly core, when you are particularly taking the core from outside. You have enough this uh, incoming inspection on core sand also. So that is very important. So monitoring and controlling core sand and press sand plays an important role in controlling AFS and seal distribution of different sand. Clay content of thin press sand should be always less than one percent. It should be less than 0 0.5 mainly. So now you put here one percent, but at least it should be one percent, less than one percent. It should be actually 0 0.5 or less. But with, but considering some factors are put up here. Should not be more than at any cost. Even if your salvaging method, it should be one percent, not more than. That. It should be less than point five percent. Next, because it will add to your clay, and the clay will get. Why it is called as a green sand? Why? It looks like a green color. It is green in color. No, then because. It has a moisture because it has a moisture. Other sand, for example, coal box, there is no moisture. We are adding resin and amine. CO2, we are adding sodium silicate and CO2. It's shell, we are adding phenol carbon dioxide resin and we are heating. So by heating that phenol carbon dioxide resin forming the bonding. In green sand, the bonding is made due to moisture. That is why it is called as green sand. We understand why it is called green sand because it has moisture as a binding. You can well, not a binding agent, but helps in a binding with help of bed water. Correct? Yes. This is a sieve distribution. You can see here <coughs> single thing. This is what expected. Double thing is not at all. It should be single thing. You can see here. Uh, one. The 
address number is around, around 61. Next, let's say 5 percent max, 15 to 65 percent, 30 percent, and 10 percent. You can have such kind of data in your sheet. You can put put your standard, and against that, you can monitor. Here you can see against 5 percent is 1.7, 15 to 65 percent is 58, 30 percent minimum which is 36, 10 percent max, it is. So you can distribution is as per requirement. So our, our stand is one within our specification with respect to APS number as well as civil distribution. Understand? When this get disturbed, when this get disturbed, it is most typical challenge to keep it on track. It will take months to bring it back. Months, not days, months. And lot of papers. So it is not an easy task. So I hope you should try to keep it in the range so that that challenge should not be come to your way. But it is very difficult. I have best many thanks. So I have experience it takes months together and very hard efforts to bring it back on the track. So anything on sand any decision on sand, you have to think three times minimum. How many times? Three times. Three times. Because any change you are making in the sand, it will give results minimum after one month, not immediately. And after you find a result and you feel feel that this result is not as per my expectation, if you want to make original thing, it will take more than two three two to three months. So that four months you are on the hot plate always. So remember whenever you are taking any decision on SAN, think three times, discuss with your team, discuss with any uh, expert or two people whether you are making a mistake or they have some experience on that because it is a very very difficult situation to handle. Metal, you can change immediately, you can get the results but with SAN, very different. It's just like our blood. I always give an example. It is like our blood. When our blood has some issue, sales come down or something happens. What happens? <coughs> they are feeling uneasy. You got something irregular. And then we start medicine or we start treatment. How much time it will take? It takes longer time. It doesn't immediately doesn't recover. It takes longer time to recover. Similarly, Sand is like a blur in our in our microstructure is like ECG. You can immediately get it, you can do the operation or something like that. Like that. So blood is very important, like sand is very important. Sand color connected to dust uh, sand color connected to dust extraction system, dust extraction. Uh, System plays an important role in sieve distribution. Uh, right from knockout, when knockout happens, what happens? Sand goes on the bed. There is a magnetic separator. Magnetic separator uh, removes the, all the metallic particle, and then sand goes to bucket elevator. Bucket elevator to it will go to polygonal sieve, and then to sand cooler. Sand cooler to again bucket elevator. Bucket elevator to dust collector system. From there, dust is being uh, extracted, and then sand goes to your return sand. This is normal procedure of sand. So, dust extraction system is an important <coughs> Dust extraction happens to two places: one at cooler, and some places it also happen at the mixer also. Some mixer have that uh, ability to extract the dust, but mainly cooler makes this dust extraction work. So, why cooler is required? Normally, people say cooler is required to reduce the temperature, correct? Making hot sand cold or uh, can say touchable. So reduce the temperature. But the most important uh, application of cooler is what? Dust extraction. Dust extraction is because otherwise dust will where will where will, where will dust go? Dust will remain inside the inside the sand inside the sand system and it will uh, make their clay, their clay will, what will happen? 
I will take two minutes before we go to the slides. Can you hear me well? Without explaining this, reading of this will not have any mind, any meaning. So that is why this is the box. This is the casting. Okay. For the metal, what happened? The sand nearby the casting start getting heated. Correct? Slowly this will go this way, this way, this way, and slowly the heat will get transferred. As we have already seen, heat transfer in sand is very slow, it is not very high, but still some heat will be getting passed. What will happen to this sand, which is very close to the it will get burned. Correct? It will get burned. What is what it means by getting burned? The bentonite content in that sand and coal compound in that sand will get burned. It will become inactive. <coughs> it will not active again because it got burned. When casting will knock out, this sand will remain sticky with the casting. On the knockout, this sand will remain with the casting. Correct? If you try to remove that sand, what will happen? That dead clay or that clay which is inactive will mix in the sand. That is why I always say that on the knockout, 100% removal of sand is not at all acceptable. So, can In Hindi, we say as a Nanga casting, white casting. Pura sand nickel gap, bluish color casting. We see some sometimes total bluish color casting means all the dead clay sand also got into the sand system and that clay increases. Who clay go nikalega, that clay will be removed by the sectarian system in the <coughs> that is why the cooler is this is what is second this is your sand wave. Above that what will happen? The slurry of bentonite will get when we are mixing the sand, what will happen? Sand will be coated by just like chikki. We have a chikki. What will happen? Good ka wo, uske upar ek layer aaya. Similarly, the sand is surrounded by this. When it gets burned, what will happen? This clay will become inactive. Correct? Inactive. Once it becomes inactive, what will happen? It absorbs water. If it is active, then so water absorbs the clay. It will activate the grain. But when it is inactive, what will happen? It will not activate the grain. It will just drink the water. Or what will happen? For example, we have we are playing the cricket with sponge, uh, tennis ball. Tennis ball we put in the water, and then if this ball is been put in the, on the ground, what will happen? The water will come down. Similarly, that will eat the water or drink the water, it will drink the water and that water remains with the grain. Or jitna aapka ye inactive shell jada rahega, na wo water jada pega. Isle aap kya bolte hai, jab dead clay padta hai, when dead clay increases, your water demand increases, your sand fusion increases, you have issues of sand fusion, uh, Pulse swelling, weight badega, this sari is equally because it will drink and it will water. Now water is in two form. Water is in two form. One is we call it as a temper water and other we call it as a free water. This temper water is required for activation of petrol. Temper water kya hai? Jitna bentonite ka activation ke liye chahiye, that is called as a tempered water. Utna hi water hume actually dena chahiye. Lekin kya hota hai? Whatever we are measuring, 2.8, 3.2, that is nothing but free water. We are not measuring tempered water. We are measuring और free water kya hoga? Yaha pe rahega, jaise metal aayega, uske saath mein kya hoga uska? Reaction hoga jitna pani jada, 
उसका उसका रिएक्शन ज्यादा होगा जितना रिएक्शन ज्यादा उतना गैस ज्यादा फॉर्म होगा बोल्स आएंगे बोल स्वेलिंग रहेगा कुछ कास्टिंग का वजन बढ़ेगा सैट वजन आएगा ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम स्टार्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ वी हैव टू रिड्यूस री वाटर वी हैव टू रिड्यूस क्ले कैंट अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज दिस लाइफ रिक्वायर्ड दिस इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इज व्हाई आई हैव एक्सप्लेनड इट अबाउट All information will come in later slides also. So we have that revision happening. So when uh, the generator, the mechanical part, you have to, you have to check how much dust is coming out. Based on that, we can understand how much dust is uh, dust is generated. So we can check it uh, properties as well as where and we can control it. So dust should be approximately 0.2 to 0.25. At the suction of cooler, then uh, its AFS should be 175 to 200. Active should be 20 to 20 to 25. LOI should be 20 to 25. VM should be 30 to 25. This is what approximately dust specification. So if your active layer is more in the dust, you find it is 25. It means your bentonite is also getting out during the dust extraction. So your extraction is more. That reduce that extraction and keeps that bentonite inside so that your bentonite consumption should you can control that bentonite. You can reduce that bentonite consumption. So that is why this just check is important. I think we have done. Uh, we have not checked the report, but we'll definitely check it and see how how much it is happening. The minimum sand level in the system should be 75 percent. It should not be less than 75 percent. This is very very important thing. Sand volume in the upper level should be always minimum 80 percent. Without that, do not run the plant. If it is 50 percent, try to increase that level up to 75 percent and then stop. If you have 50 percent, if you are running on 50 percent, means what will happen? Number of tons of sand will increase. Because sand is less, but requirement is same. The number of time the sand will rotate more and more. The more sand will rotate, it will get more heated. More heated means more moisture demand. More moisture demand will more free water. More free water means all the problems will start to rise. That is why maintaining the sand volume is very very important. Next, active clay, which is also like called as light clay, it is seven to nine point again. These are the big statement. It will change based on quantity to quantity. What kind of petrol are you using? What kind of line is it? A lot of things will describe this. But these are the average figures. Seven to nine point five is the average figure. Petrol clay normally two point five to three point five, which is not useful. So total clay will come to be some of that. Alloy four to seven, BM two point five to five. Again, big values. Depending on quantity to quantity, it will change. pH 9 to 10, WTS or alpha it should be about 16. Or high pressure it should it may go up to 20 to 30. But I have seen it is remain between 20 to 25 most of the time. I have not seen 26 to 30 many places. Normally it becomes between 18 to 25 somewhere for high pressure. Taking to 25 or alpha it remains around. 14. What I have seen in my experience, sulfur in prepared sand should be uh, 0.07 max. This is very important for them, those countries who are making tactile sand. Because if sulfur in your green sand increases, there, there are chances of failure of tactile because of the sulfur. So that you have to control. Your addition of four compounds. Next. <coughs> Next. Next. <coughs> what? What is picture? This is what. What we call it? Middle blue testing. Ah? Middle blue testing. What is called? That particular uh, ring. Hello, hello, hello. It is also called as a diamond ring. 
moisture will be spread side block so moisture will be added then we have a wet wet seal and then this chap of let it out on this what is your sample material ratio what is your uh, uh, required to see us on the sample material decide how much material I could be so then point of power point point to point five percent based on coal type and we have an ash content then dry mixing time sand plus sand additive it should be 15 to 25 seconds it should be 15 to 25 seconds then dry mixing of sand helps sand additive and sand to mix over the mix Weight mixing time, it should be 80 to 100 seconds. In place of moisture addition, more is the weight mixing time, it will create more column and can damage the water. So avoid maximum weight mixing time because jitna aapka mixing time to be well. Here, the sand is having moisture of 3%. And if you are running 90 or 95% capacity of mixer you are using, that weight sand will create lot of current for the motor. There are chances that the due to over current the motor can work. There are chances. So very careful when you are doing you have to verify and pull the load what is your and pull load you have to verify what is your current. You have to measure that. When you go for we are saying yesterday eleven hundred. So if you go for eleven hundred you have to check the current first. Otherwise it will be it will be a problem. After wet addition, uh, aerator or damping helps to break the lumps because during the sand mixing also some lumps are formed. Those lumps are being getting broken during aerator. There are aerator uh, in many mixers which uh, work as a lump breaker. So whatever lumps are there, it has been break, broken and good fluffy or pliability sand is moving towards water. This is the purpose of lump breaker or aerator. The return sand will 1 to 1.5 to 2 percent moisture will get new greater victoria petroleum. That is, return sand moisture needs to be around 1.5 to 2 percent to get better activation of petroleum. This is a very very big challenge. We are discussing from yesterday on this topic. For that, we are also suggesting spray, uh, start of spraying of moisture and all these things. But it is very uh, important that at least 1.5 percent we should get done. So that we can get better activation of petrol. During mixing, petronite gets activated when it gets wet. During mixing, petronite gets activated when it gets the water is high up, it will start activating. Slurry coating on sand paper. Slurry coating on sand paper, what we all call it. The proper distribution of sand paper and then discharge of There are normally two types of mixer. One is intensive mixture or high speed mixer which we are using. And there is cooler, gold pipe, round, round, round uh, chakra mixer. So what is the difference? Number one, there is meter and scapers. Parameters maybe. Uh, the scaper there gap, then uh, from bottom wall, outside wall, then uh, meter from last pit to scaper gap, then meter feet from Mixer side wall, meter blend, total feet, the number of feet which are used, then load current, then uh, unload current of stepper and meter, then total mixing cycle, what is dry mixing time, what is wet mixing time, total sand mix, what is sand you are using actually, the capacity you are uh, utilizing, then rotation direction of the stepper, which is rotating right way or which is wrong way, then rotation direction of meter. So these are some of the points we have summarized for mechanical checklist. I have just put up here. It will be used in our last component. Next. Same meter photo and paper photo for the video reference. Next. Same what we have seen. It has been only so many things. Next. Same thing is here. Only thing. So this is mixer daily maintenance. What should be the mixer daily maintenance? Should be 
clean the mixer every shift. Every day is also enough, but I will mention it every shift, but at least once in a day is must. The day one bar to function of mixer to sap data. Check sap and it will both petrolide and put compound for shift. In your case, P1. You have to check P1 addition, whatever you are putting on the PLC, whether actually the same addition has been happening or not. Many times that gets changed. During the time we doesn't know it and part of our time is that the GCSP is coming out of it because the addition is low. When you know it, the amount of damage has been already done in production. So that has to be verified every day. PLC, load cell, petroleum, addition of sand. Sand also you have to measure once in a week at least. Exactly 900, you are saying 900. Whether 900 is coming out of it, you have to put one badge and you have to collect it and measure it and verify that 900 is coming exactly on top. So that we have to verify. Otherwise what will happen? You are putting all the additives as per 900, that is coming 1000 or 700. All your calculation will So this is very important. Next one is use PLC and load cell for controlling exact sand weight. Do not use under utilize the sand mixer with minimum 90% capacity. This is very important. Otherwise, what will happen? You are running the mixer excess, not required. So if you are running 70%, you will have to take more batches and your energy will be wasted. We have already seen in our last uh, session what is the cost of energy. So again, we will lose money here. So you have to verify that your mixer is utilized fully. Minimum in 90%. Monitor neutral sand temperature to control water addition. So you have to control water addition by controlling your neutral sand temperature. Clearance paper gap control has to be uh, controlled to avoid long neutral sand. So you have to verify that gel gap and paper gap. You have to maintain it or control it and so that your lumps breaking will be better. Not find any lumps in your sand okay. Now we go to what happens when metal is poured in the when we are putting the metal in the mold, what is happening inside the mold. Normally we don't know anything about that. So now we have to understand what exactly happens and how it relates to our sand. So petroline work as a binder, whereas coal compound work as a bush. Petrolite work as a binder because with the moisture it might work as a binder. So it works as a binder whereas coal compound is working as a pushing agent. So it forms a thin layer between mold and metal. Right? Every layer of sand grain is, is covered by layer of petrolite. Why is this? Every grain of sand will be covered by petrolite. Coal compound is situated in between sand grains. So what will happen? In between this, the compound will be. Before pouring, sand layer adjacent to metal or casting at room temperature. Before pouring, the sand is at room temperature because it is not heated, it is at room temperature. Whatever 35, 40, whatever the atmospheric temperature, it is on room temperature. After we pour the metal inside the mold, first layer of sand gets heated. This first layer starts heating because of metal temperature. Okay. Sand temperature gets increased above 110 degree and all the moisture of the layer is from the sand is evaporated. So moisture from this layer will get, get evaporated because you know at 100 degree what will happen? Moisture will evaporate. So there is no moisture now in this area. Get so already I have same picture sand, bentonite, coal compound. This is the casting. So sand is burning from this side and like this it is Correct? Right? Next. Sand heating and sand temperature depending on sand to better portion. Now this is very very important. This one casting and this is second casting. 
observer box. What will happen? This area of stack and this area of stack. This is comparatively closer to the casting. So this area will also get fitted more compared to this area. This area will not get fitted because it is very there is a more adequate sand here. So this sand uh, temperature will go like this, this, this and somewhere here also, here itself. It will finish. So this area may not be affected. So this we call as low sand to metal ratio. Means in 100 kg sand we are pouring 50 kg metal. Here we have 300 kg sand and we are pouring 50 kg metal. So here sand to metal ratio is 1 as to 2, here sand to metal ratio is 1 as to 2. So here your sand deterioration will be more, your sand burning will be more, sand heating will be more, more clay will uh, here. Less clay will be formed, sand temperature will be less, your burning of sand will be less. So here you require more bentonite, more cobalt in the next batch, more moisture in the next batch. Whereas when this sand will come, we will not require that much of bentonite, that much of cobalt and that much of moisture because it has deteriorated less. Got it? Understand? Understand? Yes, sir. That is why this is the sand to metal. I just told you that why I told you if your sand to metal ratio is less, whether you can add more bentonite or more copper or if your is more pivot initially itself so that so that you can maintain or control your return sand consistency. Right now it is not there because this sand will form a layer at the same time so suppose it is a coil line and this is the alpha line and this is the alpha line this is the coil line so alpha line one box is broken sand is there then one box from coil will come and sand is so this is coil sand this is alpha sand this is 1 as to 3 this is 1 as to 6 what will happen when this sand will come you require this moisture, when this sand will come, you require more moisture. When this sand will come, you require less bentonite, when this sand will come, you require more. A mixer doesn't understand it. Mixer to not know this sand, this sand, this sand. You don't know this sand. You don't know this sand. Nobody knows. So, controlling this is very important. This should be consistent enough. Consistent data. For example, you are earning 10,000 rupees per month. You are earning 10,000 rupees per month. But due to recession or low order, sir decided we will earn only 15 days. So 15 days you will be sitting at home. So now your earning is 5,000. Next month again order increases, your earning is 10,000 rupees. Next month order reduces, your earning is 6,000 rupees. What will happen to your expenditures? They will remain same. So there will be fluctuation in your expenses are same. Income is less or more, less or more, less or more. Once it is consistent, you can plan your expenditure. When it is inconsistent, it is very difficult to plan your expenditure. Got it? <coughs> Similar. So that is why we need consistency. And this consistency in your plan is very difficult right now because you are learning three different lines with three different centimeter ratios. And here comes a challenging task of PPC, production, planning and control. Only thing can save you from this is PPC. We have to plan कि मुझे एक शायद मैं यहाँ पर हाय एक क्या कर सकते हैं यू कैन 
यू कैन एक्यूबिलेट थिंग्स मतलब ये तो तीनों स्टैंड को एक साथ कर सकते हो या फिर पूरी हाई लो 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 सेंटीमीटर रेशो के आइटम लगाएंगे तो वहाँ पर आपको बनाना पड़ेगा हाइट के लगाएंगे तो वहाँ पर कम करना पड़ेगा यू कैन बी कम मिक्स ऑफ दैट प्रॉपर मिक्स ऑफ दैट सो दैट यूर सैंड विल बिकम इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज अल्सो ही डोज नो विदर विच सैंड कमिंग एट वॉट रेशो एट वॉट टाइम एट वॉट लेवल विच इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू सो दिस इज अ बिग चैलेंज इन सैंड दैट इज वाई सैंड कंट्रोल इज ऑलवेज अ डिफिकल्ट टास्क विच इज नॉट दैट इजी टास्क it required skill set as well as some sort of work it is very difficult to manage particularly when we are running multiple lines single line there is no problem because one sand is coming the similar sand will run for 4 hours or 5 hours after that one time there is a break after that again same sand will rotate so Single line there is no problem, but when we are running multiple lines with a single sand plan, these challenges will be there. So overcome these challenges, what required is consistency in your particular sand, and for that you have to control moisture. You should control the moisture is very important. That is why we we are talking about return sand moisture. You should maintain one point five so that your activation of petroleum will be better, your efficiency of petroleum will be better, and it will help you little bit from coming out of this. There is no direct solution to this problem. But I cannot do that. Only thing we can, what I told you, we can increase little bit material when you are running low, uh, low centimeter ratio part, so that your uh, sand will be little bit. Take it. Okay. So we are here at. Uh, we are using. Oil compound. Oil compound. Can what will happen? It burns. Carbon gas burns, and it provides some space, some voids to accommodate that expansion of sand. Because sand gas will expand. So avoid uh, when it expand. What will happen? It will burn swell. If it is to provide that kind of thing, then what will happen? It will break. So it break now. So this is why we use oil compound. So that oil compound helps you to. Uh, accommodate that uh, swelling of or uh, grain uh, grain mix uh, expansion or swelling. Next one is due to coal component provide the space to accommodate this uh, sand grain expansion. At 650 degrees, coal component to dark that is downward. It is called as CO. What we will uh, discuss yesterday in the evening <coughs> when you increase the bond up to 10 kg. What happen? <coughs> this CO increases. CO2 gas and that gas expansion also increases. Is it got enough space? And that is why that burning gas. So if you CO CO is forming a thin layer, this is called an atmospheric effect. That thin layer between the mold and the metal, mold and metal of sand and uh, metal, and because of that, you get better. Clear? Understood? Next. How to achieve good surface finishes? How to achieve good surface finish? What are the criteria? Number one is step. status of casting surface depending on gold surface at skin formation. Status of casting surface depending on gold surface. The good is even gold. The good is your cast. जितना अच्छा चेहरा उतना अच्छा उसका रिजल्ट बैठ कर ही ना कहो उसका वैसे देखोगे बिना मेकअप के डर जाओ विद मेकअप मेकअप दैट मेक्स हर मोर ब्यूटीफुल सिमिलरली वी डू द मेकअप बाय यूजिंग कोल कंपाउंड वी मेकअप द मोल्ड बाय यूजिंग कोल कंपाउंड To get a good surface, correct. The skin formation around seven fifty to half an inch deep. So very important that at that particular time that CO should come, that amber should come, and coal should give that CO effect at that particular 
टेम्परेचर सो दैट यूर सरफेस फिनिश इज बेटर उसके पहले अगर आ गया उसके बाद में आया तो कुछ फर्क पड़ने वाला फायदा नहीं होगा बिकॉज एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम दैट स्कीज इज अगर हमारे ग्रेन्स इतने बड़े बड़े रहेंगे तो सरफेस फिनिश विल बी हमारे ग्रेन्स अगर Which surface finish is better? This one. This one. So, grain size plays an important role. That is, APS plays an important role. Jitna APS jada rahega, jitna aapka surface finish better rahega. Yani, isi liye aap shell molding. Shell molding mein jo kasi pehna pe. Whatever we make in shell molding, the surface finish is better. Whatever we make in CO2, the surface finish is not that good. That is why we paint, use the paint in CO2. We apply the painting paint to improve the surface finish. Cosmetic way, we improve the surface finish itself. But in shell, we do not require any cosmetic because of the APS number, the surface finish is always better. Next one, no moisture. Did not come moisture. Actually, no moisture is the wrong word. We should optimize moisture. Low moisture means. 2% the data to nature it should be optimized it should be around 2.5 or 2.7 to 3.2 something like that it should be optimized not low low se kya hoga phir wash hoga the word is wrong it should be optimized not then sand distribution already we discussed on that sand distribution because of sand distribution the surface finish can be then temperature of internal sand it should be Plus minus 10 degree to the root temperature. It should be plus minus 10 degree to the root temperature. Normally it doesn't go minus. Normally go on plus side only. So you can say plus 10 degree to the root temperature. After root temperature 40, it should be less than. What will happen if it is more? So suppose this is a calculation again. If temperature is more, what will happen? It will absorb more. So moisture is the biggest enemy of sand. Remember, moisture is the biggest enemy of sand. All sand issues start with this. You have to control. You have to optimize it, not control. Less is also bad. More is also bad. You have to optimize it. This is very important. When sand turns temperature again, then above that, every 10 degree rise in temperature. Bentonite effectiveness will be 15 percent less. इससे ज़्यादा आप जाएँगे तो bentonite effectiveness will be less because again it will heat much. Dead clay. What is the dead clay? We discuss sponge water. It will absorb moisture. और moisture के बाद क्या होगा? Water. That moisture will be working क्या जो free moisture so when metal come in contact with that, there will be explosion, sand fusion, and all this problem will start. Coal compound is too rough. Too rough coal compound will give this AFS effect and it will hamper your surface finish. Sand to metal mixture. We already talked about this. Because of this, what will happen? Your sand, because of active sand to metal mixture is less, what will happen? Your bacteria will be burnt out, your cold water will be burnt out, your moisture will not be there. So more demand will be there. As more demand is required, it will have a surface finish. Next. Number of turns. We talk about the volume. 75% minimum hydro should be there. Or upper level should be minimum 85%. So number of volumes will increase if your upper level goes down. Number of turns will increase, number of turns increase means your sand temperature will increase, sand temperature increase means your moisture demand will increase. Pouring temperature too high can also give up the More pouring temperature. For example, you are pouring 1420 and you pour some boxes of 1450. What will happen? It will fusion, fusion kind of thing will be there and surface pressure will be not that good. So, you have to control the pouring temperature as low as possible. 
as optimized as possible. Not good. Otherwise, it will be poor behavior. Poor, poor gas venting. If gas is not taken out properly, what will happen? Explosion will be there. Gas will remain inside the vehicle and it will uh, put a back pressure effect and explosion effect and again your surface finish will get hampered. So you have to do proper venting, you have to maintain proper permeability. Low LOI and VM is also one of the reasons. Excess diesel spray on the hole or pattern. What will happen? The diesel will create more gases and that gas will affect your surface. Improper mixing. If mixing is in, in unhomogeneous or improper, what will happen? Activation of bentonite will not be that good. The moisture will not 100%. That's, uh, distribution of slurry will not be better. And again, it will result into bad surface finish and bad quality of high active flame. High active flame is we have poor flame. Any flame will demand for the demand for moisture. Any flame will demand for moisture. The more active flame, more dense flame, it will demand for moisture. Moisture will be more and more moisture is nothing but free moisture which will affect your Insufficient sand volume. 10 to 15 ton per hour sand plant is 60 to 75 ton of return sand. Minimum 85% of sand volume. Already we talked about that. You have to maintain sand volume. 85% copper or 75% total volume, including the sand in the process. Less crushing effect provided by poor compound is another reason. Use of fine sand for poor making. Helps in maintaining overall science distribution and AFS we shall AFS we already discussed here. Same thing. Dust extraction. Dust extraction. If dust is removed more, what will happen? Your sand will become coarser. Fines will be less, sand will become coarser. Coarser sand means same. Okay. Sand color efficiency. If sand color is not efficient, what will happen? Your sand will not be properly cooled, number one, and number two, dust is not also removed properly and it will give rise to, when is high, because of high temperature it will absorb the moisture and because uh, the sand is, the dust is not removed, what will happen? Dust will remain inside, you will gently increase it, gently means again, sponge can is water. The moisture demand will again get increased. Next. This is a small uh, slide on compactor. Normally, up to this, we are expecting it in the sand. Then, this, this is a shear molding and this is a investment plastic surface. So we can be able to, in the sand, we can be able to achieve this kind of surface. Now we go to the process control area of the sand. One by one. Shake out properties. First important thing is shake out properties. In every field or every designation or every area, we have certain parameters to start with. For example, I'm uh, giving an example. You are watching cricket? Correct? 